Um, I guess, Sean, you were talking about your experience with the Biggie story and also with your experience with Favre and Moss. Have you guys ever, I guess, in your professional experiences, had a time where your race became an obstacle <laughs> in a story that you are covering? And if so, what did you do to overcome it? You know, I, I'll, I, I hate to keep talking, but <laughs> being, being an Asian male in the sports world, it's, it's very unique because, you know, I'm not black and I'm not white, you know. And so, for instance, at the last Olympics, you know, I'm covering the U.S. men's basketball team, and I'd be one of the first people there, and I would start to ask a question to one of the American players, and their face would just drop because they're expecting me to, like, speak Chinese, you know. And they're <laughs> shocked that I spoke such good English. Um, but, you know, it, it's really interesting because, um, you know, I think it's just natural. You know, you're, you're a white reporter. Maybe you gravitate initially to break the ice with some white athletes, black with black. And I, I don't know. I just have never really looked at people that way. I guess I don't have a choice. But the best example I could think of was in 1996, I was an intern at the Tennessee and in Nashville. And I was assigned by my black sports editor, Neil Scarborough, who I'm sure everybody here knows in some capacity because he's worked everywhere. But uh, Neil had sent me out to cover a NASCAR truck race. <laughs> and so I go out to the NASCAR truck race, and I'm excited because I, I wanted to cover everything. So I was really excited. I'd never covered a NASCAR race. So I go out there, get in the press box, and I'm front row, you know, getting unpacked in my bag, and this guy's just literally like right where Kevin is. And I'm like, can I help you? He's like, oh, no, we just uh, we want to make sure you're okay. You know, you, you need any <laughs> help? And I said, no, I'm good. And then he just wouldn't move, right? And so I'm like, I'm like, seriously, what's going on here? And then he didn't really say anything. And then for the first time, it kind of I looked at the name, and it's Sean Jensen. And I kind of thought, I don't think this guy thinks I'm Sean Jensen. You know, I think he expected <laughs> me to be like, you know, you know, my Sung Jin Kim, which is my <laughs> Korean name or something. <laughs> and so what I did is I pulled out my Tennessean badge and showed him, you know, and, and I didn't embarrass the guy, but I was like, you know, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here at my spot and, you know, this is my first race or whatever. And then they, the guy kind of backed up, but I kind of had a panic moment because here I was <laughs> in the stadium of like 30,000 people or whatever it was. I don't know what the race track there holds, but it was a lot of people. And I was literally the only person <laughs> I think of color in the entire place. I don't think there was even a black person there, you know? <laughs> and uh, I, that, that's the, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> yeah. So that's about the most uncomfortable that I ever felt. And I was just like, wow, this is, uh, this is really interesting. But what I found is, is that because I was different, all the people almost went out of their way to be nice to me, even if it was contrived. It was, you know, they, they kind of didn't want to be the one, you know, to look like a jerk toward the you know, toward the Asian guy, you know, so. Yeah, I wouldn't say, um, you know, I, I'm sure at some point it's been an impediment, but I've just kind of overlooked it or worked around it. But what has been disturbing um, over the years in, in, in sports, and I've done, I've done business reporting, I've done news reporting, um, and, and mostly sports the last 20 years, um, is when a black writer breaks a story or gets some information from a black athlete that becomes a big story. Um, the assumption uh, with your competitors mm. is that you got that because that athlete is black and you're black, not because of your quality as a reporter. Mm. And uh, uh, I can remember one time that came up with a, a competitor of mine and uh, I was not real happy about it. Um, uh, because it was my reporting and not that I was black that got me the information. It's because I asked the right question and maybe someone else didn't or maybe they didn't follow up. And so uh, sometimes that, you know, that's a, that's a real frustration. I, I would say for, for me, um, what, I, what I've experienced and some of the talent that I've hired is, is much more a gender issue than a race issue. I have uh, a young woman that I hired a year ago, an uh, African-American woman, to report on air um, high school sports across all the ESPN platforms. And she is constantly questioned about her knowledge of football, hmm. hands down. Hmm. And, and quite frankly, I would question 
a lot of reporters on their knowledge of football who didn't play. There are a lot of male reporters who also report on football who didn't play the sport. That's the obvious thing they say for her is, mm -hmm. you never played. And this particular woman <laughs> was an Olympian, a track and field Olympian. She was she, from Canada, ran track at USC, was you know top of her game in her sport, which is more than a lot of the male reporters, period, in any sport. But she, we were constantly getting the questions, is, is she, she's not qualified, she's not qualified. And she was absolutely qualified, and she did her homework. And, um, and then from the players, you know, they get that they, they don't take her seriously. She's on air, so she's quite attractive. They're, they'd rather hit on her than answer her questions. And I think there's just a whole different dynamic with women reporting than men, gender aside. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, race aside. No, I think that's absolutely true. Um, and I think in sports, it is it, that, that women are far more likely to be discriminated against, um, and and or have difficulties. I, I tell you a brief story. But at ESPN, we did a, a lot of research on the the programs we broadcast, and and particularly NFL Sunday Countdown, which is the big Sunday pregame show. And at one point, we were doing some focus groups on Long Island, and the audience, the the, the guys in the audience, because we only did men in the focus groups, because that's the ESPN primary audience were ranting and raving when Andrea Kramer came on, uh, who is one of the better football reporters, I think, in the business, saying she can't possibly know anything. She's a woman. How can she know anything? And then going on and on about this. I, I wanted to, and the research guy wouldn't let me do it. Behind the, the window, with those of us watching, were the producer of the program and the director of the program, both of whom were women. <laughs> and I wanted to take them out and introduce them and was told I couldn't. But there are there are a ton of, of women at ESPN who know sports, who do it really well, and I think frequently don't get the kind of credit that, that they ought to because of that. Um, you know, that's a very important point. I'm, I'm still actually processing myself. Um, as far as experiences, obviously I haven't been in the business quite as long as everyone else here, but I've had some of what Kevin was just talking about. I, I had a story that I broke. Uh, this was a few weeks ago when a coach that I was covering basically got fired uh, and everyone was kind of like, oh, how did you get a hold of that? <laughs> you know, that was the vibe when the press conference happened later that day. But, you know, it is because I just happen to have a good relationship with a coach. It had nothing to do with what the coach looked like and what I looked like. Um, but I know that that was definitely a thought going on there. Um, something really funny, and I'll say this really quickly, Sean, speaking of your uh, situation with your name, I've had that happen with me a lot. You know, I've had a lot of readers who say, you know, Coley Harvey, you know, they'll, they'll actually see me in person and say, you're Coley Harvey, you know, you're, <laughs> I, I thought you were some old white guy with a beer <laughs> belly, you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but that's, you know, that's what happens. As long as, you know, they don't necessarily have to know I'm black, but as long as they respect my reporting, my reporting style, my writing style, and then they say, oh, wow, you're black, I don't care, that's fine with me.